Lesson 20. Shipwreck. Lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Therefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Reading Acts 27. Objective. To show that Yahweh's provisional care is with us, just as it was with Paul to bring him to Rome. Background. Paul had stood before Festus and Agrippa and presented his defence against the Jewish leaders. He spoke with conviction and the Roman authorities would have released him, but for the fact that Paul had already appealed to Caesar and so he must go to Rome. Paul leaves the shores of Palestine. Acts 27 verses 1 to 11 Paul, accompanied by other prisoners, under the guard of a Roman centurion, Julius, and with his friends Luke and Aristarchus, set sail for the capital of the Roman Empire. As the ship sailed out of the harbour of Caesarea, Paul took a last look at the land of promise soon to feel the judgments of God upon a rebellious people. The following day the ship called at Sidon. In the short time Paul had been in the charge of the centurion, he had impressed him so favourably that he permitted him to go ashore and visit other disciples, a privilege not given to other prisoners. When the journey was resumed, troubles were soon encountered. The winds were not favourable to sail directly to Myra. And so the ship had to sail slowly by the coasts of Sisera and Pamphylia until it arrived at Myra, where they changed ships into a larger vessel, there carrying wheat from Alexandria to Rome and 276 people. Verse 37. The winds remained unfavourable and the process continued to be slow. Winds from the wrong direction blew until they managed to round the eastern end of the island of Crete and eventually lodged at a place known as Fair Havens. It was September and the winter was coming on fast, a time of the year when sailing was dangerous for ships of those days. All navigation on the open sea was usually discontinued by that time. A decision had to be made as to whether to continue or not. The captain wanted to sail 70 kilometres to a better port of Venice. Paul prophesied disaster if they sailed. The centurion was convinced by the master of the ship more than by a prisoner. They decided to sail on and peril on the sea. Verses 12 to 20 When a gentle south wind blew, they headed towards Venice, a port on the western tip of Crete. They had just cleared the land when a powerful wind, known as Eurogliden, meaning the northeaster, blew the ship off course to the southwest. As the wind whipped up the waves and drove the ship, the mariners did all they could to prevent the ship from sinking. The crew lifted the lifeboat on board. They undergirded the ship by passing thick ropes around the front of the ship and working them along under the ship and around it to stop the timbers from coming apart. They threw overboard tackling from the ship and some of its cargo to allow the ship to rise higher in the water. Day after day passed, and neither sun, moon or stars could be seen through the stormy clouds. So they had no means of knowing where they were or in what direction they were really going. They knew that the wind was genuinely carrying them in the direction of the coast of North Africa and its treacherous quicksands. Great Faith Displayed Verses 21 to 26. In this crisis, Paul showed the sort of man he was. For many days now the sailors had laboured without proper meals, 
and depression had begun to settle upon all on board, holding their lives in fear. Picture the scene. Here was a ship out of control, tossed helplessly on the waves. Every hope of bringing it safely to port had been given up. The mariners were hungry and tired, worn out with their excursions. It was in these fearful circumstances that Paul stood forth and spoke in a calm and confident manner. Read verses 21 to 26 and consider the magnitude of faith displayed by Paul. He is seen at a moment of great fear, standing forth, giving a prophecy of safety for all the ship, exhorting the crew to be of good cheer. How could Paul stand forth and be so bold in his predictions? The reason was, I believe God. He trusted completely in God to carry out his word. Paul knew that he must be a witness in Rome and nothing would prevent this. For an angel had said unto him, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. The ship driven aground. Verses 27 to 44. Paul in his speech showed confidence and cheerfulness, which proved to be infectious. And his words and example increased the courage of all on board. It was about midnight, on the fourteenth day since leaving Fair Havens, and the ship was still drifting. When the sound of breaking waves was heard, a sign that they were nearing land. Soundings were immediately taken and they found that they were 20 fathoms in water. A little later it was 15 fathoms. They were rapidly approaching land, so they at once cast out four anchors and wished for the day. Lying anchored near to land, the sailors attempted to leave the ship and secure their own safety by using the boat which they had lowered. It was at this moment of time that Paul clearly demonstrated the influence that he had gained on the ship. Paul declared to the centurion and the soldiers that unless the sailors remained within the ship, they would not be saved. Verse 31 his intervention caused the soldiers to cut the ropes and the boat drifted away. We are reminded that unless we stay in the ark of God's providing, we cannot be saved. The critical time would come in the morning. It was necessary for crew and passengers to be prepared for it. Paul therefore asked them to partake of food and in the presence of all gave thanks for it. Verses 33 to 36 as the daylight drew and having been refreshed by the food they had eaten, the sailors attempted to beach the ship in a bay that had been sighted. As the wind drove the ship toward the shore, it struck a sandbank in the middle of the bay. There it stayed, but as the stern was buffeted by the waves, it began to break up. Verse 41 the soldiers suggested that the prisoners should be killed in case they attempted to escape. If they had, the soldiers would have been held responsible under Roman law. Verse 42. The centurion was determined to save Paul and stopped this idea. Finally, some by swimming and some using floating wreckage, all reached land safely. Verse 44. Principle for living. Faith conquers fear. In the face of a treacherous storm, Paul remained calm and ready always to speak of his beliefs. Paul demonstrated on this hazardous journey that we must learn through all the storms of life, even in the face of death itself, to have the same calm conviction as shown by the Apostle. I believe God. We can then Overcome all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Philippians 4 verse 13 We are all on the journey of life and our faith can be demonstrated at its best under trials and tribulations. Remember that not only can we be delivered through our faith, but we, by example and strength of character, can influence others in the way of godly paths and so break down opposition to the truth. Paul was not embarrassed about being a servant of God, neither should we be. 
He demonstrated his beliefs in God with such power and such conviction that even the centurion obeyed Paul's commands in a time of trouble. Such was his respect for Paul. He was determined that he should not be harmed when the other soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners. How are our characters viewed by our friends around us? As we sail through times of crime, immorality and ungodliness? The crux of this lesson can be summed up in one word, faith. Do you understand the full meaning of this word? If not, then refer to the instructor, lesson number 70. Summary and lesson for us. God was with Paul to bring him safely to Rome to witness to the gospel there. Paul encouraged the centurion not to sail, but he listened more to the expert, the captain of the ship, than a man inspired by God. God preserved the life of every person on the ship for Paul's sake. We can be saved if we remain in the ship. These lessons are the words taken from the Christadelphian Sunday School Association notes www.cssa.asn.au used with permission. Email your questions to readthebible at gmail.com And we look forward to you listening to the next lesson which will be called Paul Goes to Rome.